Welcome back to our study on the book of Hebrews. If you've been following along with us, you've realized that the book of Hebrews has a lot of information to unpack, a lot of theology to unpack. And in order to do so, you really have to dig down into the context, look into the Old Testament, look into the era in which the book of Hebrews was written. And when you do that, we can extrapolate so much meaning, so much theology, so much information that helps enhance our knowledge of Scripture, helps us understand theology, and, and gives us application into Christian living and Christian worship and, and the Christian faith. And so last week, we, we looked at what the book of Hebrews says about remaining in the sacrifice of Christ, remaining in what he has done for us, remaining in his work, so that in so doing, we grow more like him. The Spirit works within us. We are living for the Spirit, living for the work of Christ, not chasing after the things of the world. And this week, as we move forward from that, the teacher of Hebrews goes into this section that is often referred to as the Hall of Faith or Heroes of the Faith, because he digs through the Old Testament and gives examples on faith, on those who lived in faith. But before we get into that, before we look at all of these different heroes that the teacher brings up, it's important that we look at what's called an inclusio on this section. So the section in which is often referred to as the Hall of Faith or the Heroes of Faith comes from verses 30 uh, or verse 3 through verse 38. Uh, and in that section, a lot of examples are given on people of faith from the Old Testament, the way they live, the way they exemplify the faith in God. But an inclusio is where you have a beginning section and an ending section that bookends the middle section. And so the middle section is where we have the heroes of the faith. The inclusio, you can think of it as an introduction and a conclusion, but that introduction and conclusion is how you understand what's in the middle. So in order for us to understand the significance of the teacher going into this detail about heroes of the faith, we have to look at the inclusio on what faith is. And so before going into this teaching or these examples of heroes of the faith, the author of Hebrews lays out for us what faith is. And he says, now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. That word reality is an extremely, extremely important word. We'll get to that in a, in, in a second. Um, but we see then in 1139, all these, meaning all the heroes of the faith that are in the middle of this inclusio, were approved by their faith, but they did not receive what was promised. And so the emphasis here is that we can be approved through our faith. Our faith is something that brings us into God's people. But those that came before us did not receive what was promised, because only in Christ can the eternal promise rest come. And so that's the emphasis that is being made here, is he's setting the example of what faith looks like by the forerunners of our faith, but emphasizing that only in faith in Christ is the promise received. Now, let's go back to verse, verse 1 here. Faith is the reality of what is hoped for. Now, this word is an extremely important philosophical word. It's the word hypostasis, and, and this word is um, used a lot in Greek writings, but it's also used in, in um, Judaic writings. And it's this, the best way to say it, it's a philosophical word. It's a word that has a lot of emphasis on metaphysical reality. And the best way to define it is that it is a word indicating the reality, the concrete reality of eternal being. And so in the mind of the Stoics, and when I say Stoic, Stoic philosophy is Greek philosophy that would have came from the 300 BCs, so about 300 years prior to Christianity. Those are people like Plato and um, Aristotle, Socrates, people that, these are names that we know of philosophers 
2,000 years removed. I, the, the philosophy of Aristotle has a huge impact on the way that our school system in the 21st century operates today. And so the Stoics, the philosophers, of the Greek Hellenistic philosophers, they have a high impact on the way that we think in a modern Western world today. And the way that they thought of reality was that there was reality, and then there was manifestation of reality. And so the undergirding of the manifestation of reality, so the manifestation of reality is the circle outside of the dot in the middle, the manifestation of reality is what we witness on a daily basis. It is our understanding of the realm of reality. But underneath that realm, underneath the manifestation, is the hypostasis that leads into the time-bound reality. So there is an eternal reality that bleeds into the time-bound reality that we witness. And we can witness the eternal hypostasis by experiencing and, and thinking deeply, thinking logically about the reality that we experience. Now, the author of Hebrews isn't using this word in that sort of technicality, technical language, but he is drawing on the philosophy of it. And by the time of the first century, a few hundred years had passed, this word had worked its way into the writings of Jewish theologians and philosophers most importantly, a couple, one was, by, was named Josephus, and the other was named Philo. And the way that they used this word was to express intelligible reality, meaning something that we can't make sense of, but we know with assurance is there, that it is the real existence behind the existence we experience. And so they would delineate between what would be what they would call real ex existence versus experience. And so in this sense, hypostasis is real existence. And experience is earthly reality. So what the author is saying here, by using this word that had worked its way into Jewish philosophical language, is that faith comes from the real Re existence. It is the hypostasis. It is what undergirds all other reality. It is this dot in the middle of the circle that, that is the reality that we face. Now, he is using this to say that faith is the hypostasis. It's the reality. It's what undergirds all things of what we hope for. But it's also the proof of what we don't see. So we don't see the reality that our faith comes from, and yet our faith is proof that that reality is there. It's this play on words that the author of Hebrews is utilizing, and then he says, here's, an, here's some examples of people who experienced this type of reality, who understood and were moved into the reality we are in by this unseen reality. I know this is a little bit confusing, but essentially what he is saying is this is the hypostasis, and this is the reality that we experience. And those who came before us, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, Joseph and David, and, and all of these forerunners of our faith, the way they lived their life here was impacted by the faith that came from here. So the hypostasis that was here impacted the reality that the heroes of faith experienced. And what he is saying is this experience here that they lived in this life that was impacted by the hypostasis is proof that they were living because of some unseen reality that we intelligibly can't explain. We can't explain it intelligibly, but we see its effects. Similar to the wind. You know, one of the things Jesus says in his um, discussion with Nicodemus in John 3, is that you don't you, you see the wind, the effects of the wind, but you don't see the wind. You see the fact that the trees are moving. You see the fact that the water ripples. You see things swirling in the air, but you don't actually see wind. And this is another example of hypostasis. There is a reality behind 
the reality we live that impacts the reality we live. And the author of Hebrews is saying, our forefathers were in this. They experienced this faith. They experienced this reality. It made them live differently. It manifested itself into their lives. But, as he ends this section, they were approved by that reality. They applied that reality to their life. But they didn't receive what was promised. Now why? Because they didn't have Jesus. And so, what you'll find throughout this section here is every time there there are uh, 14 different instances here of the author and that's a, a significant number seven instances at first and seven instances after a certain period but in these 14 instances the author introduces another hero of the old testament by saying by faith by faith. So, for example, he starts in verse 3. By faith, we understand the universe was created by the word of God. So, by faith, by this understanding that comes from this unseen reality, we understand that all things were created by the word of God. Now, we, we can't go back in a time machine and logically prove that the word of God created the universe, but we have this unintellig- this intelligible reality that impacts who we are today that we know with certainty that all things came into motion by the direction of God. And by faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. So without being able to explain why, he just knew that he offered he, he had to offer something to God in submission and in, in, in worship of God, and Cain did it. And there's all sorts of examples of this that There is this faith that undergirds the heroes of the Old Testament that is inexplicable, it's unexplainable, but it's something that has impacted the experiential reality that comes from something greater. And through all of these examples, we eventually come to Hebrews 11.13, and 11.13 is situated in the middle of this section. So you have seven by faiths and seven by faith following it. And in this middle section, we have verse 13. So it's very chiastic in its structure. We've gone over chiasm. Everything leads to this certain point. It's possible this is a chiasm. But more importantly, we get to this middle section here that says, these all died in faith. So in faith, they died. So they were moved. By this hypostasis, they were moved by this in- intelligible reality, by this foundation of reality of, of who we are. They were moved by it and brought it into experience, but they still died. They still died, although they had not received the things that were promised. They died in faith, even though they hadn't received the promise. They saw from a distance greeted them, and confessed them that they were foreigners and temporary residents on earth. So in this faith, the experience of the hearers of the faith that came before us, they understood that there was something greater. They understood that there was something more, that there was an eternal reality of which they were just temporary residents on earth. They understood all of that. And it impacted and shifted and and change the way they experience earthly reality, and yet, even though they lived by that faith, they lived by this hypostasis, they never received the promise that they lived by. And then the author of Hebrews concludes and says, since God has provided something better for us. So this is the qualifier of the sentence. Since God has provided something better for us, meaning All of those, they lived by this hypostasis, they lived by this faith, the inexplainable, the intelligible reality impacted their experiential reality, they lived by it, but they didn't receive that promise. So since God has provided us with something better, so that they would not be made perfect without us. That we now get to join into this reality that is a part of the reality that 
impacted their experience. There's so much philosophical language that's being used here that is emphasizing we are moved by something we can't explain. We are moved and propelled by this reality at the center of all reality. That's what faith is. We are moved and, and, and we hope and long for this eternal reality in which we realize we're just temporary residents on earth. And more than that, you know, there's heroes of the faith that came before us that realized that this was true. But we have the promise. We step into that reality in our life. We experience here and now what it means to be God's children, what it means to be the kingdom of God already while being temporary residents on earth. We understand the eternal reality because we're living it already in anticipation of its fullness in the not yet. So the teacher here, he's laying an example. He's setting an example from the Old Testament of those who lived in this hypostasis but never fully experienced the promise that they were longing for. And he's encouraging us, live in that faith as well. Realize that there is something greater beyond the experience that we have, and even though as Christians we're already living in part of that experience, part of that reality, there's something even greater that awaits. And we should exemplify our forerunners in the faith by bringing that intelligible reality into our experience while also deeply longing for the fullness of that reality to come forward, where we, for all of eternity, will be residing in the throne room of God, loving Him, admiring Him, and being with Him in His presence forever. So think about that this week. Think about what does it mean for us to live in the current reality we're in, but be impacted by a faith and a promise that goes be outside of our experience now. What does it mean to bring that faith, such as the heroes that came before us, into our experience now as we long for the fulfillment of that faith, that reality in God's presence? How do you apply that to your life? How do you apply that to your worship? How do you apply that to your daily study? How do you apply that to the way that you go about your daily, weekly life? How do you apply the unseen reality into the experiential reality as we hope and long for the fulfillment of the unseen reality? It's a philosophical question. It's a theological question, but it's a transformative question when we apply it to our life. And so I hope you do that this week. In anticipation of next week, we only have two sessions remaining. Next week, we'll be studying Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 29. So that's the entire, entire book. And I hope you continue joining us as we deep dive into the book of Hebrews throughout the summer. I've been enjoying it thoroughly, and I hope you do as well. I'll see you next week.